What is good everybody and welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we have my full Elimination Chamber 2018 show review for you guys. I'm going to run through the entire show, talk about my thoughts, talk about the matches themselves, and give you everything you need to know about Elimination Chamber 2018. So with that being said guys, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So the show did start off with the first ever Women's Elimination Chamber for the Raw Women's Championship. The Elimination Chamber started with Bayley and Sonya Deville in the ring. Decent little start. The third entry into the match was Mandy Rose. Sonya and Rose doubled on Bayley to open up this match. You know, they were beating her down. They even intertwined her arms into the chamber walls at one time, just beating her down, beating her down. And then the fourth entry into this match was Sasha Banks. She came out, you know, she came out hot, throwing everyone um, down, just kicking some butt, helped out Bayley. Threw Rose off of one of the pods, just came out destroying Rose. She whoops up on Absolution as a whole. Bailey and Sasha F up Sonya Deville. Sasha gets uh, Mandy Rose back in the, uh, hits her with a backstabber, puts her in the bank statement. Uh, Sonya tries to go and break it up, but Bailey did intercept her and take her out. Mandy Rose ends up tapping out to the bank statement, and so she was the first elimination of this matchup. Then we had Mickey James join the match. She was the fifth entry, comes out hot, whooping everybody's butt. I was really impressed with Mickey James in this match. I loved her. She was flying around everywhere, just totally killing it. Uh, she climbed up to the top of the pod, jumped off of the pod, took out Sonya, and pinned her to eliminate her. So that was pretty cool. I thought that was awesome to eliminate Sonya Deville. Sasha hits Mickey with a backstabber. Then Bailey follows it up with a Bailey to Belly. Bailey pins Mickey to eliminate her. So now we are down to Sasha and Bailey in the ring, waiting on Alexa Bliss to enter the match. The clock goes off, and Alexa tries to keep her pod shut. She ends up escaping and is literally climbing all around the chamber. Um, Sasha and Bailey are giving chase, but they cannot seem to get her. Finally, they do finally get her on top of a pod, but um, Sasha acts like she was going to help Bailey up onto the pod and then kicks her off, you know, every woman for herself. Then we had Bailey to Bailey to Sasha off the top rope. I thought that was amazing. A great spot. Alexa rolls up Bailey to eliminate her. Alexa goes for Twisted Bliss on Sasha and Banks gets her knees up. Banks' leg gets tang tangled up in the chamber wall and it looked pretty nasty. I thought that was kind of crazy. Um, it was pretty sick looking the way the angle they had on there. Uh, Alexa then climbed up on top of a pod and did a twisted blitz off of the top of the pod. I thought that was a very nice spot as well. Did not expect that. Sasha locks in the bank statement, but they roll underneath the rope into the ring. She still had it locked in, but Bliss got out. Bliss hits the DDT, pins Sasha Banks, and does retain the championship. I thought this uh, women's elimination chamber was pretty decent. A lot better than I expected, and um, I did like it. I would have liked Bailey or Sasha to win this thing, you know, so we could have had a better women's uh, Raw Women's Championship match at WrestleMania. But Alexa retains, and it looks like we're going to get Alexa Bliss taking on Nia Jax at WrestleMania 34. Next up, we had the Raw Tag Team Championship match between The Bar taking on Titus Catering, Apollo Crews, or Apollo now. They totally dropped Crews. It's Apollo and Titus, uh, a.k.a. Titus Catering. The Bar jumped the catering before the match even started. The catering jumped back and got The Bar. It was your typical Raw match, in my opinion. It picked up near the end, but nothing too special. The Bar did retain in this matchup. Thank God, Titus Catering can now go back to what they do best. And uh, there was really nothing special about this match. The Bar retained in a raw match at the best. It just wasn't the greatest match. It did, in fact, pick up near the end, but nothing too, too impressive. But the Bar moved on, and this freaking raw tag division is just freaking depleted, man. There are literally no teams. You have the Bar, the Club, and the Revival, and that is it. And they're not even near the tag team championships. It looks like the Club and Revival are going head-to-head. -head. So I don't even know what to expect, but the Bar did retain in this matchup. Next up, we had Asuka versus Nia Jax. And before we even get into this matchup, guys, I just want to state again that how awful that uh, Nia shouldn't even be in this position to begin with. I freaking hated that uh, she is in, even in this opportunity. I think it's totally crapping on the fact that Asuka outlasted 29 other women to win the first ever Women's Royal Rumble. She already had to deal with Ronda Rousey stealing her mojo at the end there. So for Nia Jax to even have an opportunity to be inserted in this matchup is absolutely ridiculous. But now that we've covered that, um, I like the style of the match. I like the good back and forth, even though I disagreed with it. I think that Asuka should look dominant. I don't agree with Nia Jax being anywhere near the Raw Women's Championship, but um, Asuka did win this matchup, thank God. There was no double count BS. The match was better than I expected. Even though this match finished very weak, I thought the roll-up looked very slow and just not very good, but um, 
Nia did end up attacking Asuka after the matchup, spearing her through the barricade, you know, to leave, leave her looking very strong. I'm sure that Nia will go on to challenge Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship, while Asuka goes on to challenge Charlotte for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. Next, we had Woken Matt Hardy taking on Bray Wyatt, and just God bless these two men, guys. It was just atrocious. You know, Matt comes out. Then Bray comes out, but replaces Matt in the ring, which I thought was weird. You know, Matt was playing mind games. He was hiding. He was singing the out, the obsolete tune. Matt surprises Bray on the steps to start the matchup off. And this match was just very boring. I didn't even want to see this match. After their awful, hellacious, just terrible match at Raw 25, I wanted nothing to do with this. I thought the build was terrible as well. A beach ball comes out, steals the effing show. You know, they freaking just, the crowd was not into this match. They did the wave. We had Rusev Day chance. No one gave an absolute dang about this match, and I was included in this. Uh, the, this feud was just awful. I just wanted it to end. Hopefully it ended here at Elimination Chamber. Matt Hardy did win this match, thank God. Um, I love Matt, and I just think that all Wyatt feuds are stale. I just think that he needs something, man. He needs to go away for a while or something. He needs to go away, you know, fix his family situation, and then come back or something because everything he's doing right now is very stale and just very, very bland. But um, it sucks for the guy, but it's just the way they treated him, you know, from the start and the way they're treating Matt Hardy. This was just awful. Next up, we had Ronda Rousey's contract signing. In my notes here, I have who cares, who cares, who cares. But uh, Kurt Angle came out to the ring. Triple H and Stephanie came out to the ring. Um, I want to add this here. Uh, didn't Triple H pedigree Angle at Survivor Series and WWE Creative just loves to insult our intelligence? Um, I guess they just forgot about that. But I guess it would play out here um, after that was just my initial thought. But outcomes overrated Ronda Rousey. Uh, just a terrible, atrocious little thing on the mic. I was looking for Paul Heyman at this uh, spot, but um, she did say that she wanted to earn the fans' respect, which I thought was cool. You know, hopefully they do book her that way, but she does. She needs to take more promo class work. I just I think she needs to relax and just calm down. I think she'd be fine, but uh, what she did tonight was not very good. If you didn't notice, the guy there was a guy getting arrested behind them, but anyways... Uh, Kurt mentioned Triple H and Stephanie McMahon are trying to manipulate Ronda into signing because of WrestleMania 31. Triple H excuses Angle's comments because of the flu, which I thought was really weird and just, I don't know, very cheesy. Steph says she's impressed with Ronda, but Kurt says that Steph said she, ha uh, she, was, she, said she was a has-been and that Steph could take her. Ronda gets in Stephanie's face. Triple H breaks it up. Ronda then gets in Triple H's face, destroys him through a table, and then Stephanie slaps Ronda before leaving. And I thought this was interesting. I guess this is going to set up Ronda and Kurt Angle taking on Stephanie and Triple H at WrestleMania 34. We all knew it was coming. We've all seen the rumors, but that's probably what's going to be happening here. But uh, I did like her much more after this segment. Seeing her slam Triple H I thought was pretty cool, even though I'm not... I'm not a fan of Ronda Rousey right now. Hopefully that does change in the near future. Maybe she can earn my respect in the ring. But as far as I'm concerned, she is just stealing a lot of limelight from a lot of the people who are deserving of it. But anyways, guys, let's move on to the main event. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, the first ever seven-man elimination chamber. We had the men's chamber match here. Winner, obviously, going on to WrestleMania 34 to fight the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar in the main event. Did you notice it said in the main event, we're just going to disregard Shinsuke Nakamura winning the Rumble to go on to WrestleMania? Like, that's totally ridiculous. I think that uh, the WWE Champion, the winner of the Rumble, should main event WrestleMania. I think that's atrocious that they do that. But getting into the match, you know, Elias started off the thing singing like he always does. I just wanted to add that this guy is so freaking over, guys. I love him. He's a great dude. Great gimmick. I hope he keeps this up. Braun interrupts to start the entrances. The rest of the men come out, and the match begins. Seth was looking fresh in his SummerSlam gear. Finn was in his blue live event, uh, live event gear, looking very, very fresh. Miz tries to team up with Seth to begin the match, then switches up and tries to team up with Finn. Uh, Miz even tries to two-sweet Finn, but then Seth and Finn just uh, team up and attack the Miz. Love the triple threat start. I thought that was great. There was a lot of great work going on. Not surprising because of all the workers in the ring, but uh, there, was a, there was a great spot in which uh, Miz was doing yes kicks to everyone. I loved that. It was like uh, Roman, Cena, Finn, and Seth just all giving them yes kicks. Braun finally enters the match. Throws Miz off the top of a pod. He power slam Miz, eliminates him. So the Miz is gone first. Intercontinental Champion out of there. Then we had, 
Elias, he was staying in his pod because he was afraid of Strowman, so he was chilling out. Then, meanwhile, while that was happening, we had a freaking quadruple shield powerbomb, and then a quadruple pin to Braun Strowman. Kicks out. Then John Cena loads up Braun Strowman and AAs him. Tries to pin him. He kicks out at one. Spear to Braun Strowman by Roman. Kicks out at two. Curb stomp and coup de gras to Braun Strowman, but he lands outside the ring, so they were unable to pin him. Braun finally gets back up after Elias exits his pod and gets some work in. Power slam to Elias, and the drifter drifts right out of the elimination chamber, and his WrestleMania Universal Championship hopes are gone. Braun then picks up Cena and power slams him to eliminate John Cena. Very surprising. Did not expect John to be gone uh, third, but he was. I guess we are not going to be getting Taker versus Cena this early. Maybe it starts tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. I guess we will have to find out and see. I was actually surprised, but Finn started destroying Braun, man. He was just kicking everybody's butt. I loved it. He was flying around the ring and just killing it. He finally coup de gras Roman. I thought he was going to pin Roman. I literally for a split second thought he was. But Braun interfered, power slammed Finn, and out Finn goes. And so we're down to the final three here. we got Braun, Seth, and Roman. Uh, Seth and Roman team up on Strowman, you know, beat him down. They finally get him down. They fight for a bit. Nice back and forth between them. Seth hits freaking Strowman with a frog splash from the top of a pod. I thought this man was going to be gone here. He did not. He kicked out. Power slam to Seth Rollins, and there he goes. Very disappointed by that. So here we are. Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns, he has eliminated everybody in this matchup. You know they had to stack the odds against the big dog. You know they had to make it look like he was Superman, like he was a god here. Roman and Braun, Strowman runs through a pod. Roman, spear, spear, spear. Roman wins, and here we go. Roman Reigns is headed to WrestleMania 34 to fight the beast Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship, and he will main event absolute trash you know we all knew it but it's just terrible that it's so predictable i hate rumors and stuff so this was totally predictable we knew it was coming but after the match braun was standing tall after he power slammed roman twice and sent him through a pod to end the show but that is pretty much the entire elimination chamber 2018 I guess we will have to see what happens on Monday Night Raw. Will there be an Undertaker, you know, interrupting Cena? Will there be, you know, anything like that? Well, only time will tell. But this match, I mean, this pay-per-view wasn't that great, guys. You know, both chamber matches were great. I'd say all of the other matches were average to below average at best. So, Ronda's thing was, I guess, just decent, I, I guess. She was atrocious on the mic, but I guess that segment was okay because we had uh, Triple H going through a table. But this, uh, this, 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 this whole pay-per-view was not that great. I did love both chamber matches, so that's cool. I don't like the result of the both chambers, for real, but it's no biggie, I guess. Uh, as long as we get Oscar versus Charlotte and we get, you know, something good with the main event scene. What if what happens if Roman Reigns gets busted for steroids, though? Where are they going to go with that? That's what I'm confused by. Um, you know, apparently Johnny Bravo or whatever his name is is supposed to have some dirt on Roman. So if that comes out to be true and um, he's supposed to be suspended for 60 days or whatever it is, then what are you going to do for WrestleMania? And there's supposedly supposed to be 15 other guys on that list from WWE or 10 to 15 guys. So if that happens too, we could be talking about it a very depleted WrestleMania, guys, but we will only know in the coming weeks to see. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like down below. Try to get this video to 150 likes. Subscribe for more epic WWE and WWE figure-related videos. Comment down below if you enjoyed Elimination Chamber, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.